Hey there YouTube, it's Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com This is the second video in the series on chiller training. Uh, if you haven't watched the first video yet and you're just starting out learning about chillers or you need to refresh your knowledge then I recommend you go back and watch that first video. Uh, in this video we're going to take a deeper look into how a chiller works and uh, look into each of its components to see what's happening inside there. Um, to build up your base knowledge of uh, how chillers work. Um, I recommend that you grab a piece of paper and a pen and start making some notes as we go through the video as we're going to draw out a, a schematic representation of a chiller and we'll look inside each component and we'll start to plot some graphs as well to really uh, build your knowledge up there. So make a lot of notes and some drawings and some sketches and, uh, and that will advance you and your knowledge of, uh, of the subject. So as I said, uh, we're going to draw a schematic first as we work our way around the chiller. So we'll start off with the evaporator. Now the, the evaporator is where uh, the chilled water, the cold water, is produced and it, it's sent out from there, um, off around the building to provide air conditioning and uh, collect up all that unwanted heat that's inside the space. And that heat is then, as it's collected up uh, into the chilled water circuit, it is brought back to the chiller to obviously uh, transfer that heat and uh, send cold water out again. So we're going to draw in that first loop there. Um, this is just representing the chilled water loop, um, which is coming in here. So it's coming back from the building and uh, it's going passes through the evaporator where it transfers its heat into the into the, the chamber here so this will, the white area will be filled with refrigerant and the the black line here will be filled with uh, water so as that um, transfers its heat out of the pipe it then leaves the evaporator and goes back around the building to collect more heat and make its way back uh, I'll just show you what a, a real evaporator would look like on the um, I'm chill here, so you can walk into a plant room, and you can spot uh, where the the evaporator should be. So, this here, this black cylinder, is the evaporator on a chiller. This is the McQuay chiller, obviously. Um, you can tell this is the the evaporator because uh, obviously the chilled water, the cold water, is produced here. So it, this is insulated. Uh, you want to insulate that as well because uh, that's it's it has cost you money to uh, to produce the cold water inside there. So you want to keep that as cold as possible to send it around the building. So when you look at the chiller, you'll you'll see this part here, which is uh, insulated, and that is the evaporator. There are some entrances uh, and exits for different pipes. Um, we've got one you can see entering here and. Uh, this is the same chiller, by the way. It's just this photo is from the back. This photo is from the front. So the uh, you've got an exit there for let's draw that on for the refrigerant, and you've got the entrance there for the refrigerant, and then the chilled water is entering here, and it's exiting here. So the refrigerant leaves the evaporator and uh, heads towards the compressor and this is known as the suction line so let's uh, let's just draw that on the schematic there so this line is representing the refrigerant which was inside the evaporator exiting and uh, and heading up towards the compressor um, this uh, as we go through we're going to start to draw some some graphs later on so uh, we're going to refer to this as point one on the graphs, and uh, that is the the suction line. I'll just show you what the uh, where the suction line is on the uh, on the chiller. So the suction line is this uh, pipe here on top of the evaporator. You can't really see it on this one, but it's just behind this uh, controls box here. Um, just here so the refrigerant is exiting the evaporator and heading into the uh, compressor there 
So let's just draw the compressor on the schematic there. So uh, this icon here is representing the compressor. You've got the compression lines, obviously, where uh, it is being the refrigerant is being compressed into there. Um, let's just have a quick look at what the uh, where the compressor is on the, on the chiller. So, so the uh, the compressor is this part here on the top there. Well, it's just behind the controls boxes here. Again, on this side, so you can't quite see it. Um, but the compressor is here. Only this section here uh, is the actual compressor. This part here at the back, the black part, is actually just an induction motor, so that's the, the driving force of the compressor, and that is what is uh, the compressor and the motor hit coupled here. Uh, that's what's actually pushing the refrigerant all the way around the, the chiller. Um, but again, only that small section there is the compressor. So as the refrigerant leaves there, um, it's going to come round uh, and head towards the condenser and so this um, this line here which is known as the discharge line and uh, and that is going to be referred to as point two uh, in the graphs as we as we develop these uh, a little bit later on in the video um, in fact I'll just show you what the where the uh, discharge line the uh, discharge line sorry the uh, the discharge line is this section here you can't see it on the, on this photo unfortunately so it's just this this pipe here which is coming out of the compressor and heading down into the uh, the condenser um, you've got there's a valve here it's just a, an isolating valve so you can uh, contain the refrigerant in there if you was to uh, you, you had to remove the compressor or something um, just this this small pipe here so uh, just take that off and so let's draw the condenser on the schematic um, so this chamber here represents the the condenser in there very similar uh, looking to the evaporator and uh, obviously in, in the condenser there's also uh, a loop going through there which is the condenser water line and that is the water uh, which circulates between the condenser and the cooling tower that uh, that line there is representing the water that's coming from the cooling tower um, and it's passing through here it's probably entering around uh, 27 degrees Celsius as the water enters there it passes through the condenser and it picks up all the heat inside the condenser from the refrigerant transfers that through the pipe wall into the water Remember the water is always inside the pipe the two uh, never actually meet they're always separated by the wall and the condenser water then leaves the condenser and circulates back up to the cooling tower where that heat that's uh, unwanted heat is rejected from the building and that is then sent back around in a continuous loop um, to reject that heat from uh, from the building and that's probably going to leave it around maybe 32 degrees Celsius it, it depends on the application but these are just some uh, some learning numbers um, let's just have a look inside the condenser or well, not inside the condenser yet actually uh, we will do it a little bit later um, but I'll just show you where the condenser is so you can spot this so oh, this region uh, cylinder here this is the condenser and uh, it, it's got a it, may, it looks fairly similar to the evaporator slightly different process inside which we'll, we'll have a look at um, I said earlier about the evaporator and how that's that's always insulated or should always be insulated because inside there is uh, your expensive chilled water um, well in here is all the, the heat that's being rejected so uh, it's not always insulated. Sometimes it is. It depends. Um, you know, any any heat that leaves there is going to heat up the plant room here. 
Um, so, you know, some processes you can't have that. But you'll often find that uh, it's not insulated. And again, there are some entrances and exits on this, which we'll, uh, we'll point out here. So obviously we've already seen that the refrigerant uh, is entering the condenser from here. And then it's going to leave through, through this pipe here. And, uh, and then we've got, uh, you can actually see it on, on this photo, but the, on this side, the, um, uh, the condenser water is entering, it fo follows through and then it turns back on itself um, and then and exits the, uh, the condenser there. And we'll have a look inside how that's working uh, later on in the video. And uh, obviously we're gonna make some more videos showing uh, we're going to open up one of these condensers and all the parts in the chiller and actually have a look inside there. So then as the uh, the refrigerant leaves the condenser there, um, we're going to draw that on the schematic as well. So this line here, um, which is referred to as the liquid line, um, and that we will refer to as point three. Um, as we draw the graphs on later on, um, let's just highlight actually where the, um, the liquid line is. So this here is the liquid line. You see a better uh, close up here. Um, so this is the liquid line here entering, uh, exiting from the condenser, passing through and going into the expansion valve there. Um, this here is just a king valve, um, this big block not this, this uh, pilot tube here. Um, this big block here, which is the king valve, that, that just isolates. You can you can trap the uh, the refrigerant inside the condenser should you ever need to perform some maintenance or something like this on it. So as I just said, uh, the refrigerant then uh, from the liquid line, it's going to enter into the expansion valve. So we'll just draw that on as well. Mark that up as the expansion valve. And uh, we'll just have a quick look at what an actual expansion valve looks like on a chiller. So uh, this part here is the expansion valve. Uh, it's insulated on this one, so you can't really see the valve. Um, so I've included this, this photo here. Um, it's obviously a different chiller. This is a much older model. Um, and this is the expansion valve here. Um, usually you, you won't see these. These, these should be uh, insulated. Uh, you don't want to um, uh, have these exposed. Um, obviously this is a newer version so it's got all the, the latest insulation on it. Um, so this the expansion valve does exactly that. It expands the refrigerant inside it and we'll, we'll have a closer look at that uh, a little bit later on in the video. Um, but the, this is a central part of every chiller you're going to find, and it's it's always down here, underneath the chiller, um, just below the evaporator here. And uh, that point there, um, well, that as the refrigerant leaves the expansion valve and heads back into the evaporator, uh, we draw that line on as well, just to complete our schematic there. And this line between the expansion valve and the evaporator. Uh, which is kind of known as the two-phase line and that is going to be known as point four as we draw the graphs on um, shortly but just to show you what um, the real uh, two-phase line or point four looks like on a chiller let's have a quick look and uh, the, uh, the the schematic might be a little bit misleading in the, in the size there, so uh, the uh, two-phase line is just this little area here between the top of the valve and the bottom of the evaporator. This, this is a bit longer area here, so just from the top of the valve there, coming up through and joining the bottom of the evaporator. So now let's have a look uh, a little closer look into each part of the uh, of the chiller see how they're working what's causing them to uh, make some changes in the temperature and pressure etc of the refrigerant 
and to help us understand what's happening inside there um, we're going to plot some graphs as well just as we go around and uh, so let's have a look so the first one we're going to plot is uh, the temperature and entropy uh, graph and the second one we're going to look at is the pressure and enthalpy chart now you don't need to know right now what the difference is between entropy and enthalpy uh, we're going to cover that in a later video all you need to know with these charts is that uh, as we go around there will be a change in the temperature pressure entropy and enthalpy and these lines here this one here and this one there these represent the change in in state or phase um, of the refrigerant so this line here represents the liquid line or the uh, the refrigerant being a liquid and this line here represents the refrigerant being a gas so the closer it gets as we plot this uh, on there and you'll see that later on uh, the closer we plot each point and these are the points uh, one two three and four the closer we plot these uh, to this line the more likely is to be a liquid past there is or on there or past there is definitely a liquid um, on this line or past it is going to be a gas or a vapor and if the line is plotted between there then it is somewhere between the two states so it may be part liquid part gas um, but we'll, we'll have a look uh, a much better look into these sort of graphs in a further video but now you just need to understand that if there's uh, if we plot these points and there's a difference between uh, and the vertical then there has been a change in the temperature or the pressure uh, if it doesn't change on the vertical then there has been no change in in the temperature or pressure but if there's a change on the horizontal on the y-axis then on this chart or graph there will be a change in entropy and in this graph there will be a change in enthalpy again don't get too tied up about that just yet if you don't fully understand it uh, you don't need to know that just yet you just need to understand that there will be a change and we'll as we go around the chiller we'll see how that is changing and why it's changing so let's uh, have a look at point one here let's click that on there so um, at point one if we took a measurement here we'll find that the refrigerant is a at a low pressure it's also a low temperature and that it is a saturated vapor and uh, that refrigerant as we said it goes into the compressor and it gets compressed it gets pushed closer and closer together all the atoms and molecules etc are forced closer and closer together so when the refrigerant leaves there it's going to leave the compressor as a high pressure high temperature superheated vapor so as we know the the difference between these two points uh, we can plot that on the on the graphs so let's just do that so you'll see point one here and here which represents uh, point one here which is the line between the evaporator and the compressor uh, that is a low pressure low temperature so this is the temperature you can see it's low on the graph and you can see it's uh, a low pressure on this this chart here and then uh, as it goes through the compressor and everything becomes more compact and more more excited then it comes out and it's a high pressure so on this graph here you can see it has increased in, uh, in pressure up to 0.2 and it has also increased in temperature to point to here there has been some increase um, in the entropy that's why it's moved over a bit and there has also been a change in enthalpy so it's moved uh, across on the x-axis as well as the y-axis there so let's just have a quick look inside the compressor just to see what's happening inside there um, I'll just draw on again quickly to help you understand where the compressor is. So compressor is up here. This is obviously a different chiller. This is a much older version and a larger uh, compressor as well, uh, chiller as well. 
and the compressor is also located there. Now, um, just to understand how a compressor actually works, um, we're going to look at uh, this compression um, pi piston compressor. Uh, you, you might notice that this is a different type of compressor to this. This is a centrifugal type compressor, um, whereas this is a piston based, which is a, a, a bit like a bike pump if you imagine it like this. Um, the two essentially do the same task. They're going to compress um, the, the vapor that or, or gas that you put inside there. But uh, it takes a bit more understanding um, for the centrifugal chiller or compressor. So we're going to leave that type of compressor for this video. And just to build our understanding of what's happening, we're going to look more at, the, at this model here. So in the piston compressor, we've got the main compressor chamber here. That's where uh, what, what will hold all the refrigerant that enters. Then we've got the piston. The piston moves up and down, and that is what squashes and uh, compresses all the refrigerant. We've also got the outlet valve here and the inlet valve. Uh, this is the inlet for the low pressure refrigerant. Just, I'm just showing that blue to indicate that it's a low pressure. And then we've also got the outlet here, which is the high pressure side of the compressor. The uh, low pressure inlet there is this suction line on top of the chiller. And this uh, out outlet here of the high pressure side, that is the discharge line here, which is entering into the condenser. So in the first instance there, we've got the piston, which has clearly uh, moved up. And as that pulls back into the chamber, it's going to uh, cause a suction and that will bring the uh, low pressure refrigerant inside into the chamber. This, this valve, uh, inlet valve here will open and allow that to pass and fill this void inside until it reaches uh, its maximum. So the piston will then change direction and it will start to come back into the chamber um, and that will start to compress. So you can see the color change here representing that the, the refrigerant has started to become compressed and it's getting hotter and more condensed. Um, that change in direction is then going to close this valve. Um, but notice it doesn't yet open up the outlet valve because there's not a high enough pressure in there. So as the piston comes down and finally reaches its maximum um, cycle, it's fully compressed the refrigerant up to its maximum and this forces open the outlet here and that allows the refrigerant to leave and uh, head into the condenser. Now if you imagine like a bike pump um, as you move the, um, the handle um, up and outwards then you draw air into the pump and as you start to push that down again that forces the valve open on the bike tire and that pushes the air inside the tire as it reaches its maximum it stops any air kind of leaving from there and as you hold the the base of the pump um, where the compression is happening you'll notice it's getting hotter and hotter um, and that's because all the molecules have been squeezed all in together so it's the same amount of energy just in a very confined amount of space and this excites all the the molecules and that inside there um, starts to make the, cause them to vibrate and um, you know imagine kind of a big crowd of people as you push them all together they get a bit rowdy and don't really like being there so it gets very hot very noisy and very very excited so that uh, hot um, high energy uh, air in the bike pump is pushed into the tire and in this example obviously it's the refrigerant so that hot high pressure um, refrigerant is now being forced into the condenser. So the refrigerant that leaves the compressor is pushed up to a high pressure, high temperature superheated vapor, and you want it to be hot, quite, you know, pretty hot when it enters into the condenser because it needs to reject the heat that it picked up in the evaporator. So you compress it all, that puts it all together, so it's a very condensed form of energy. 
and uh, and that raises the temperature and the temperature difference then because it's much hotter when it enters compared to the water uh, the condenser water that's coming back from the cooling tower um, that temperature difference allows all that heat or a, a big chunk of that heat to uh, leave the refrigerant and transfer into the condenser water if the refrigerant and the condenser water were the same temperature there would obviously be no heat transfer so you couldn't you couldn't reject the heat from the building so that's why it goes up to that that high pressure high temperature so the refrigerant enters into the condenser and uh, in as it passes through there it gives up some of its uh, thermal energy uh, which is transformed or, um, so transferred transferred into the condenser water and as this occurs um, it's going to start to change the phase of the refrigerant in the condenser so as it leaves there it's going to be still at a high pressure it's going to drop a bit in uh, in temperature and it will now become a saturated liquid and that will be 0.3 which we will plot just shortly um, first of all, I'll just show you inside a condenser to build your knowledge up about what's kind of happening inside there. So this is just the basic layout um, showing the condenser. We've got the refrigerant entering here, coming into the condenser and then exiting here. We've also got the uh, condenser water loop here that's coming in and exits again there. So the refrigerant enters as a high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor, and it's gonna leave here for it as a high pressure, medium temperature, or a lower temperature, uh, saturated liquid. So as it's coming in, as that superheated vapor, I'll just do some uh, illustration here to show that. And uh, as it comes in, it's gonna fill up the, uh, the void inside here. It's gonna fill up the inside uh, chamber of the condenser and uh, then we're going to have obviously the condenser water coming in um, passing through the pipes inside remember that it never leaves the pipe it's just going to transfer its thermal energy from the, re the really hot refrigerant and transfer that through the wall of the pipe and into the cooler condenser water there and that will take that heat away and send it up into the, uh, the cooling tower when that occurs um, that is going to start to condense the refrigerant that's inside because there's a temperature difference between that and removing the, the thermal energy from that hot superheated uh, vapor refrigerant will start to condense that all along the, the walls of the pipe there that will cause the, the pipe to sweat and drip and uh, that will fill the bottom of the condenser with this, uh, uh, this saturated liquid still at a high pressure because it's being forced in from the com uh, from the compressor mm -hmm. and so it's going to be uh, collected there runs away and then comes down um, uh, out this pipe at the bottom here and that will head off to the expansion valve so uh, we're just going to add some color in there to show you the condenser water loop there picking up some thermal energy from the refrigerant and taking that off up into the cooling tower to reject that heat from the building. So now that we know there's a difference between uh, point 0.2 and point 0.3 and uh, there's that change uh, in state so we can also plot that onto the graph as well and uh, there we can see that there has been no change in, in pressure so we've got the high pressure side and high pressure side has been that change in temperature going from 0.2 to 0.3 and there's also been a change in the state from a superheated vapor which is up here outside the, the, the kind of the vapor line the gas line here so it's in the superheated region and that has then come down across the line um, of the saturated vapor and uh, it has crossed over and then in, entered the saturated liquid line next the refrigerant is going to enter into the expansion valve and uh, as I mentioned the the refrigerant will be expanded there and so as it uh, passes through the expansion valve you will see there's a change in pressure uh, temperature and uh, also a, a, re a phase 
slight phase change as well so it becomes part liquid part vapor mixture so it's somewhere between the two and we can plot that on the graphs there so 0.3 up here which is a uh, high pressure uh, which changes down to a lower pressure so we get that change there across the two um, we're also going to have a change in temperature from 0.3 here down to a lower temperature on the, the vertical y-axis here down to 0.4 and you notice it's moved over from this line and moved over into the dome and that's between the two lines so that is uh, a mixture somewhere between the two it's not quite fully liquid and it's not quite um, fully vapor there'll be some parts in between there and you'll notice there has been a change in entropy but there has not been a change in enthalpy let's have a quick look inside uh, the expansion valve to see what's happening there so this is the basic expansion valve I've kind of based this um, um, base it on an, an orifice type expansion valve that's probably the most basic type you can have and with that there's no mechanical or moving parts it is a fixed um, restriction within the pipe and here we've got the uh, refrigerant that's coming in from the condenser and it's going to head over here over into the uh, evaporator so it comes in as a high pressure medium temperature saturated liquid it will leave as a low pressure low temperature liquid vapor mixture so let's draw that on there now um, as the refrigerant enters here and there is that restriction and that prevents uh, and slows down the the flow of refrigerant coming through there so um, not all of it can pass through at the same time obviously if you re if you remove that then all this refrigerant could just pass straight through but because we've got the restriction there um, it's you, you can't all pass through so the pressure is going to start to build up here that's why you've got the high pressure side now if you if you kind of imagine it maybe something like in a busy train station right so you've got the big queue of people that have all just come off the train they're gonna try and get through the ticket barriers and leave so here uh, there's more and more people joining the back of this queue and they're pushing they're, they're and shoving um, it all gets a bit excited there so um, you've got that that high uh, you know a, a higher temp temperature and pressure on on this side and then the barrier here of the orifice um, that will allow uh, a limited number uh, of people or the parts of the refrigerant to pass through at any time and uh, as it as the refrigerant leaves or the people leave there um, that would enter into a lower pressure so they're free to to move around the refrigerant can can enter into the space um, as it enters into this space it will expand that that change in pressure through that little hole there is going to force it to be, become um, change more towards a, uh, a gas a vapor and uh, so it will instantly try to expand as much as it can to fill this uh, this void that would be present and uh, one of the ways you can think about this is if you imagine like uh, with a garden hose right so if you were to place your thumb over the end of the garden hose that would cause us that would cause the water to spray out and become like a mist and uh, you might spray that mist maybe on your face and, and that would uh, cause you to cool down and so you've got that change in temperature um, but also as it expands um, it's going to be less compact so that that energy that would be there um, is spread over a wider region so uh, it's expanded so it's a lower pressure a uh, lower temperature and then it's somewhere in between it's you know it's a mist so it's uh, it's liquid but it's also like a gas how it's moving around and the, uh, the the hose that you're holding would be a high pressure you probably couldn't squeeze that you might be able to bend it but you couldn't squeeze it um, and then on the other side where the mist is coming out is that low pressure side so it turns and expands um, into a, uh, a vapor so then coming back to the schematic we can finally join up the last part which is across the evaporator and that is joining point four and back to point one 
and that's passing through the evaporator going as a low pressure, low temperature liquid vapor mixture entering into the evaporator that is then picking up the thermal energy from uh, the chilled water, that's, that's the warm chilled water that's coming in and entering that evaporator and that's then going to leave at a, at a low pressure, low temperature saturated vapor so that's going to go through a phase change get back to point one here um, and that's because the refrigerant starts to, to boil off inside there which causes that uh, phase change and we can just have a look inside uh, the basic kind of concept of an evaporator to see what's happening inside there so we've got the low pressure low temperature liquid vapor mixture coming in here entering into the evaporator and uh, starting to kind of flood that a bit and um, we've got the uh, the can the can Got the uh, the chilled water coming in here. Um, there's a mistake, so I've just noticed there. I've labeled this as the condenser water. That's actually the chilled water outlet. It is still going to be cold, and it's the the flow from there, um, which I'll, I'll just color that in and mark with the arrow so you know what's happening. So we've got the the warm return chilled water inlet here, and that's coming back as it's picked up all the heat from the building that needs to be rejected. And that's a, a warm water coming in passing through the pipe um, coming into the evaporator chamber and that is going to start to give off its heat and transfer that through the pipe wall and that chilled water will leave uh, much cooler as it's given off its heat so it's cooled down and that's going to flow and go back around the building off to the AHUs to provide the uh, air conditioning again uh, sorry I've, I've labeled this wrong as condenser that should say chilled water so as that um, chilled water the, the warm chilled water enters it's going to be a higher temperature than the refrigerant here and uh, and as it's that higher temperature that heat is going to transfer um, tra uh, pass through onto the, the tube wall here and that will mean that the, the pipe wall is the tube wall is also uh, warm and warmer than the refrigerant and as the refrigerant then touches uh, the pipe wall it's going to start to boil off um, and that's because the boiling point of the refrigerant is actually incredibly low so if you imagine with water uh, the boiling point is about 100 degrees celsius maybe 212 degrees fahrenheit depending on the atmospheric pressure um, but with refrigerant, it's much lower than that. It's actually incredibly lower than that. So, um, if you was to look at maybe refrigerant R134A, which is pretty typical in in um, European chillers at least, uh, that would have a, a boiling point of minus 26 degrees Celsius or negative 15 degrees Fahrenheit. So, uh, it will boil at a very low temperature. So, as we've got the warm return water, uh, chilled water coming back from the building with all that heat inside um, that's probably going to come back at maybe maybe something around 34 degrees celsius 93 degrees fahrenheit um, you know it, it can be different to that but this is just an example so that's got more than enough uh, the temperature of that is high, you know high enough to boil that refrigerant and turn it into a vapor so it's a bit like uh, if you imagine plugging in and turning on an electric kettle so all the, the liquid inside the water, if you imagine that is the, um, the refrigerant that is coming in and when you plug uh, the kettle in and turn it on, that heating element, that would represent the chilled water pipe there and as that heats up it's going to cause the water to boil and that will turn it into steam whereas the refrigerant is going to turn um, into a saturated vapour. It's going to vaporise it and uh, that would leave there through the low pressure, low temperature, saturated vapor and we can see there just the uh, the refrigerant turning into that saturated vapor and then heading off over to the uh, compressor where it's being sucked in um, to repeat the process and then go around again so coming back to the schematic uh, we can just draw on that line there the colored line representing that the 
chilled water has came in um, as a higher temperature it's gone in um, given off its some of its thermal energy that it's picked up it's going back cooler again to go and cycle around the building and pick up more heat providing that air conditioning so that completes the loop and uh, you can see that the refrigerant has gone from the evaporator off into the compressor the compressor is the driving force remember that's what's pushing the refrigerant around the system the refrigerant has then left the compressor gone around and entered into the condenser where it's going to reject the heat that it picked up in the evaporator the condenser will then reject that off into the cooling towers and let that force that out of the building through the fans and uh, meanwhile the refrigerant will leave the condenser fall around into the expansion valve it will be expanded uh, we've got that slight phase change again and then that will come back and complete loop entering into the evaporator and uh, taking away that heat that's picked up in the building ready to provide more air conditioning that is the uh, most basic understanding of how a chiller works I uh, hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned a lot hope you made a lot of notes um, if you have any questions maybe uh, you haven't fully understood something um, by all means please leave a, a comment in the section below uh, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can if for um, any reason uh, you need some more help I would, I'd recommend going back and watching the video uh, maybe watching the first video also and if this has helped you then please like share uh, like and share the video and subscribe to us we've got more videos coming all the time uh, you can also get us on Google Twitter Facebook uh, and also our website thanks for watching